Welcome uh, to the Deaf Portal Awards uh, first gala event of the year 2022. We are delighted and proud to have arrived to the point of the award ceremony and super excited to share with you the trends and insights um, that presented themselves this year. My name is Laura Vosch. Uh, I am one of the team of uh, the organizers behind the Deaf Portal Awards, and I will be hosting uh, this event together uh, with Christophe Antoma on the stage. Um, he's sitting next to me, but he's hiding. And um, in the background, um, many of my colleagues are working, um, Rebecca, Zoltan, Claudia, Adam, and um, I think some of us are only in the audience, but have worked a lot to make this award a success. Um, our um, user experience and uh, designer team, uh, especially. So for the past four months, um, I felt very excited and, and it was a sort of surreal excitement and the enthusiasm to work with some of the most outstanding and knowledgeable people in the API and DevRel communities. Um, the 11 jurors who I was assisting for the Dev Portal Awards this year um, was researching the state of the art of API documentation and developer experience. And sort of freely paraphrasing uh, what I have learned from Chris McDermott. Um, so why is this important? Uh, because um, in practice theory, um, we say that a team can only really make progress if they actually know what good looks like. They have to have a feel, a taste for good. And I think that this feel or taste for excellence is the catalyst that you need to add to the requisite uh, meaning, materials, and competences to be able to create, maintain, operate a good developer portal. And so competition or not, I think that um, the feel for the state of the art and beyond that, what we can strive towards uh, is the key takeaway of this awards. I want to appreciate and recognize the more and more widening array of technologists uh, who build and use these outstanding portals and want to show that such amazing portals are possible. And all the while we are trying to expose how finely orchestrated and expensive work goes um, into these portals. So in 2022, uh, we had an illustrious and very varied cohort of 43 developer portals nominated. And as every year, we revised the award categories towards the publicly accessible aspects of portals, looking at the developer experience from the perspective of a wider range of technologists. And who did actually the looking? Um, a panel of 11 jurors surveyed the nominees over 15 categories. Each juror is independent of the Deaf Portal Awards organizers, an expert in their field, and their explorations and evaluations are strictly vendor and gateway neutral. They worked in three separate groups, and when they finished, we asked each of the groups on their findings and insights over where portals are doing well, where maybe not so well. Today, we have the greatest honor and joy to introduce you to three of these jurors. I interviewed Anne Gentle, Antoni Rue and Alvaro Navarro, asking for their insights on where they see the standard expectations of developer portal experience shifting. This conversation with the jurors will be published soon with a full transcript. Welcome to the Deaf Portal Awards 2022, the first interview with our jurors. This year, we have 11 jurors, and I'm interviewing first three of our jurors. And gentle, and to you and Alvaro Navarro, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So first, short introductions. Anne is a, an industry recognized author. Your books promote collaboration among developers and writers. You work as a developer experience manager at Cisco DevNet, the developer program for Cisco platforms to connect, secure, and automate. Thank you for being a juror and uh, for being here today. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. So yeah, I work at Cisco and I manage developer advocates, API documentation, and we work across multiple um, engineering teams to produce developer.cisco.com, which is our developer portal. So I'm always looking at developer portals to see what's, what's happening in the industry. Um, I'm, of course, super interested in it for research for my book, um, which is about using GitHub and those kind of like 
developer-based techniques for authoring as well. So it's very, very close to the code, very close to developers. So I'm always on the lookout. So being a juror is just a an opportunity to keep reading, keep doing research. Absolutely. So yeah, I, I'm happy to happy to dive in. Mm -hmm. And your book is now at its third edition, fourth. Yes, I am waiting for the print proof literally to show up at my house so I can approve it. Um, our second juror today is Anthony Wu. Anthony works as developer relations lead at Myro, okay. and you're calling in from Amsterdam. How are you doing? And I, well, most people who are here probably know you from prior API the docs presentations. So what are you currently doing at Cairo, and and um, how do you look at developer portals now? So yeah, as you said, I've been involved in the API industry and in general developer relations industry for about ten years. Uh, I participated in various API to docs events. Um, I used to be on the other side of the world, submitting our developer portal. We used to work with Alvaro and our training as well, and got a award for that. And moving to the jury part uh, has been super interesting. It's really looking at it from a different eye and realizing a lot of things that I was seeing as someone submitting or building a developer portal is very different as looking in detail and looking at so many other developer portals. It's also a very good learning opportunity. Uh, I'm not doing research as Anne, but we're trying every day at Miro to improve our developer portal and in general, the developer experience and being able to learn from so many very good developer portals has been really, really, uh, really good. And that's learning that I can bring back to my teams, share with them, and we can improve what we have. So, so far, I really liked it, as well, it was a good opportunity to work and collaborate again with Alvaro and meet Anne. So, so far, very, very excited. And Alvaro Navarro currently works at Spotify for developers. And you're an open source lover. And for over a decade, you work developing and advocating technologies at companies such as Airbus and Amadeus. How has your experience so far as a juror? Has been great. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for joining this uh, amazing Developer Portal Awards. Um, yeah, so I had the opportunity to work uh, together with Anthony uh, and Amadeus, working with APIs, Developer Portal. So uh, based on all this experience, uh, and uh, we're helping a lot to, to assess uh, the all the, the nominees of the developer portals. And also right now that we are working continuously improving our developer portal at Spotify, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to bring all this knowledge back to, to, to the company and also to the uh, to the awards. So yeah, thank you for the, for the opportunity. We are honored and thank you for joining. What are the approaches, and I asked first Alvaro, um, what are the approaches that you really liked from the nominees? What are the, the particular qualities that, that struck you? Yeah, I really like the, the ways on developer portals have, uh, have implemented, uh, for example, interactive examples to help developers understand their product. But also, um, I would like to mention one developer portal that implemented something that, that I'm not used to see very often is uh, an anonymous sandbox, which uh, allow developers to make API calls without creating an account. That is uh, amazing. And as I said, this is something that we are not used to see. And this is a re really, really great idea. Yeah, maybe I can add on that. I have yeah. very, very similar <laughs> feedback than Alvaro. Uh, the first thing that I was really, uh, really pleased and I really like is I see many developer portal um, trying to make the onboarding process as simple and as quick as possible. Uh, there is one the proposal that has been amazing in doing that. It's the platform OS one. They are the one click setup. You can literally set up all your environment and start playing with it in, in a second. And that was fantastic. Uh, I really liked as well the part of being able to start testing, the one you mentioned, Alvaro, the anonymous uh, sandbox, where you literally you go to the proposal, you access the interactive documentation, and you're able to test it right away. There's literally no barrier to test. And that was uh, very, very good. Um, if I remember well, that was Fiserv. Um, and yeah, correct. the other thing that I would like to highlight as well is, and I think that's improvement that I've seen over the last year, is there are more and more visual testing. They're offering more visual way of testing in, instead of just, there's this thing when we've been accessing a lot of text-based portal, we spend our life reading JSON. It's really refreshing to see companies that are bringing a new layer to that. And the, the one you name, Alvaro, which you have a demo application 
visual demo application you can play with that is linked to the documentation next to it, I found that brilliant. And that's improved a lot the developer experience. Uh, so yeah, big kudos to oh, yeah. Chase, I believe on that. Yes, and that's the one that really, really struck me was that people were working really hard on use cases, which I know are hard to come up with. You have to really think about interactions, think about what the users really want to do, and then code it. And I think the Chase one absolutely stuck out to me. It's interactive in the browser. It's very step-by-step -step still and ex you know, explaining to anyone who even if you're new to fintech or you kind of have to think through, well, what is my app really doing? Um, it just was a great visual and very, you know, self-explanatory. I really, really appreciated that mm -hmm. one. And if you think about it, it's very inclusive as well, right? It means where before you needed to have some more technical background or being able to browse into these APIs, having a visual layout on that, it invites many other different persona or people that have different backgrounds. So yeah. That's true. The other one that I think, Alvaro, you might have kind of like the idea that struck that struck me as well is the idea that not all of us want to trade our data for information necessarily. So I think we're all getting more aware of that. And so the site that was like, you don't, you know, cookies are just for eating. <laughs> There's no cookies on the site. <laughs> like all three of yeah. us were like, wow, this is great. And I think that was another sort of central theme that you know we we felt like oh you know what just you know to be a developer you don't have to feel like there's this transactional here's my information for some information so that one uh was just all three of us just was it was a jaw-dropping moment what would be the one feature beyond um cookies are for eating <laughs> that to name that that used to be a novelty like the ones that you just mentioned um, years prior. And I am really glad to see that it's becoming kind of the standard expectations from a dev portal. I think I have two that comes in my mind. The first one is the one we mentioned before, interactive documentation and interactive reference documentation became now a standard when if you look at a couple of years back, it was not. Uh, and that for me, that was one of the biggest uh, improvement in developer experience, not having to set up a developer environment just to discover or test quickly something uh, this has that's has been a very, very good improvement. And what comes with that as well, there are some API products that work in a very complex industries. I can think about finance, for example. And they've been able to browse to bring sandbox environments that replicate the finance industry to be able to test these APIs. Where in the past it was almost like, well, if you're not part of that industry, you cannot really test anything. You cannot really discover that. All these sandboxing, which is free and accessible to everybody in a simple way for these APIs, for me has been a big revolution as well that I'm very happy to see. And I think that now sandboxing became part of a, a standard requirement when you build API products, which was not a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. I think that's very true. And I, I think, uh, you know, infrastructure accessibility is super important in, in you know, one of our catchphrases is not that everybody has a million dollars worth of Cisco gear laying around. And so it is part of that accessibility everywhere. And I think one that really, you know, stood out to me is the Mercedes Benz site where they sandbox and you can bring your own car. That was amazing. I'm like, okay, time to go get a Mercedes because <laughs> that's a great developer experience. So I, I do think just, you know, sandboxing, accessible infrastructure, um, just making gear available is is just what everyone needs. Uh, software developers, infrastructure engineers, if you're in DevOps, it, it it actually encompasses a broad broad array of technologists. Yeah, I fully agree. I think the one of the most interesting things are the uh, interactivity uh, with the developer portal. Uh, to me, the, I mean, the, the biggest or the most interesting one is the examples, but also the API reference that in the past used to be something static. And now uh, having the you know typical API reference where you can make API calls, modify the, the parameters, et cetera, is like kind of standard for a, every developer portal. I think that that's super important. Um, one of the things I really love that is um, like, again, and the standard these days is multiple programming languages when, you know, uh, reading examples, uh, not focus only on the two, three typical 
programming language like okay so this is enough for everyone so now it's like we try to cover all the different profiles personas uh from the developer community and that's super super important when you say interactive and you you're really happy to see more interactivity on portals when you say interactive where does that start what's what is interactive i think that's a fair query in line of in line of questioning because you you want as a developer to be able to try things out but product to product that could vary widely so you know and where the user starts from their own knowledge so you know we use the term hands on a lot at cisco but if they don't have a basic knowledge of even linux that might be a barrier right so for us interactive is um even as far as like a terminal browser a terminal window inside the browser all the way up to access to you know infrastructure behind the scenes but i think the the you know standard that everyone expects is try it out that button has yeah. become interactive which means i click a button in a web browser and i get a response i'd love to hear your 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 all thoughts though too yeah, I am pretty aligned with that definition of uh, interactive. And uh, yeah, for us, it's kind of the same. So in, uh, interactivity is when you uh, use a developer portal, for example, to perform an API call, you get a response, and that response helps you to really understand the schema, for example, of the of the API. Uh, or you have, uh, as we have seen in many, many uh, developer portals from the nominees, uh, you have a small example that you can tweak, you can modify a little bit, and that uh, invokes a call in the back end and that's uh, modifying the front somehow, right? So you can really understand how this API is uh, uh, modifying the behavior of the of the client. That's, to me, the, the level of in interactivity that uh, really helps when understanding a product. Yeah, I will define it about the doc, the developer portal interactivity is everything I can do without having to set up an environment by just playing and clicking around. That will be my expectation for developer portal interactivity. As soon as I need to set up a developer environment and run some programming languages, run a framework and so on, then I have to do a lot of things on my side. And I'm not anymore on the developer portal, I'm out. If you embed something on the developer portal, the try out, for example, is a good example, but you could have as well as a JavaScript editor embedded, and I just have to click around, and that works. A demo app, which is embedded. I'll still consider interactive because I can click around and play. Is there a flip side to this? Something that's becoming standard and you wish it didn't? That's a tough one. There's a <laughs> lot of uh, Swagger UI that's yeah. not really stylized. So to stand out, the ones that sort of look like Swagger UI, but they had, you know, definitely stuck to something that was their brand, uh, maybe added some little bit of um, flair that made you know, I'm on the TomTom Tom site. Um, I think one of their pointers turned into a, a, a geo pointer, right? So anything you could do to just make your reference docs not the thing you see everywhere that that would help mm -hmm. any pet peeves on her anthony <laughs> i was actually thinking about swagger as well uh because i mean uh implementing and integrating an api reference is not easy uh and many developers portals uh you know choose for, to integrate swagger ui with Work fine, brings many functionalities out of the box. But if you don't, you know, tweak a little bit the UA part, the integration with the rest of the of the portal. The, I mean, from visual perspective, doesn't look good. And yeah, that's something that many I've seen there. Uh, you know, uh, many many times. Mm -hmm. I have one. It may be a little controversial, but uh, Open API specification brought a lot of very good things uh, and automation, which means now almost all developer portals have client libraries, which is fantastic. And they have many languages. The part the difference I've seen is many companies decide now to use only the auto-generated version of the client libraries. And do not, I mean, many of them decide to not invest as much in building the high quality uh, handcrafted uh, SDK because now you can scale in many programming languages with automation, which is fantastic. 
But I feel that when you try some of them, you feel on the developer experience that is still a generated code. It doesn't offer such a fantastic developer experience. So I'm very happy to see more of this. I'm very happy to see more automation. I just hope we're going to find as an industry the right balance between automation and as well offering good, high quality and developer experience for, for the users. I agree. Mm -hmm. That's investment. And that's, you know, really having empathy for the developer. And is there, um, are there processes or solutions that you wish you we could see more of, even though maybe we can we can acknowledge that the times are not yet ready for it. So when it's not necessarily a question of money, maybe a question of culture, maybe a question of legislation, or the missing technical piece that's just not there yet. We can imagine, you can imagine, but it cannot be for some reason it cannot manifest yet. Do you, do you have an idea for things like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I can go first if you if you want. Um, so I would love to see more developers, developer portals paying more attention to accessibility. That's to me one of the things that I really miss uh, in many developer portals. Um, is the time already here? I'm sure it is. Um, so probably it's a matter of you know resources, time. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, I think it's important to make developer portals inclusive for everyone. That's the one that sticks out to me as well. And I, I think it goes hand in hand with inclusive language. Um, that is accessibility for all. And it's and it's inclusive language for, you know, abilities for humans or humans, for, you know, race, for gender, gender is not binary. And I just think that the the teams that applied in accessibility, nearly all of the applications also mention inclusive language. So I know these are in our circles definitely being thought of hand in hand, which is what we want to keep striving for, because I do believe that is the encompassing sense is this is about, you know, bringing more um, people to your site and letting them work on it. Work on the tech there. Yeah. For me, when you're talking about uh, the inclusive experience and the the accessibility, I'm very keen on cognitive accessibility, both in the uh, official meaning of cognitive accessibility, but also in the everyday meaning, as in, this is a wall of text, and please give me a drawing. These seem to be conflicting with each other, but we still do see a lot of text on these pages where not everybody's necessarily thinking in words. What is your opinion on this? Uh, I, I fully agree. I would love to see more visual representations of concepts in general, more diagrams, more graphics that will help people to visually understand things without having to read pages of text. If we look at the, the current developer portals we have, most of them are heavy text-based. Uh, it means you have to go through pages of pages of explanation to understand concepts. They have very little, very few images, very few diagrams. And if it's the case, everything is still very static. Most of them are screenshots. They are not um, customized for the, for the onboarding. They are not customized for what I'm looking for. I would expect to be able similar on when I experienced an API reference to be able to see a visual representation of the data, not always have to read JSON. But as well, when I read about use cases or what, all the, what the product does, to have visual representation diagrams, graphics, you know, images that help me to quickly in an eye to be able to understand what it is and convince me to spend more time reading these pages. Uh, and there's still very few of them. It's still an industry that were heavily text-based. You know, I was looking back through our uh, sheets even last night to jog my memory on the visual design. And the visual design is still very beautiful on the starter pages and the sort of orientation to a developer portal. But then you go to the documentation, it's like visual design just falls by the wayside. That We even had to struggle on a lot of pages to find a graphic to judge it, I feel. So I yeah, even going back through notes, Yesterday, I, I thought, oh, wow, the visual design, there was a lot of it on the portal. Then you get into the docs and you kind of, it's a wasteland even, unfortunately. So it's a good point. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with the idea of having more diagrams and images in the documentation, but uh, as long as these images has a you know well-defined purpose or and and help developers to understand something in particular, I think it's fine. It's not for the sake of having more colors and you know images in the documentation. Okay. So okay. yeah, and I agree. I mean. We are used to see uh, developer documentation based on text because I think it's what developers are used to consume, let's say. But uh, probably we can think about a, a, you know, a, an approach of providing more visual content that helps developers to understand uh, what's going on. I do agree 100% with what Anna Navarro said. Um, maybe I can add to that a better or more localization. Um, I think it's still a standard expectation that everybody speaks a decent level of English to be able to use technical products. Um, when you think about it, what's the percentage of the world of people that really fully or fluent of very good in English? Many people might understand high level what it means, but if they were on to dig into the product, that's a big barrier. And language is one of the biggest barrier to collaborations and most probably one of the biggest barrier as of being inclusive in the product. So more and better localization would be fantastic to see. I don't know if we're ready for that because we understand that technically it's difficult, uh, but I will see uh, it will be a very good step forward for the industry. And another one that I could think of, it's maybe a little bit more technical and linked to what we talked about before. There's still this, very often this process when there's the need of creating an account and providing some data, like an email, validating the email, and there are a lot of steps that are still there before even discovering what the product is. And that's a big buyer when you think about it. Not everybody has time to invest to just discover if something is good or not. Uh, and by asking all these steps um, before just letting them discover and test it, um, you're potentially losing uh, future developers that will have been interested by your product. And it's something that was the case a long time ago. I see it getting better, and we saw a very good example of the anonymous sandbox but it's still not an industry standard. Uh, and it's still some for some complex industry where you still to, need to request access and you have some validation processes. Um, I think I, will I would love to see in the future more standardized processes or tooling that you can just try out of the box without zero barrier of adoption. And then you can decide to create an account. And then if you want to invest and you're ready to invest in the product, that's the right moment to provide some of your personal data, like an email. But before that, I'm always like, oh, do I really want to create an account, validate the email, just to see, create a developer app, get an API key, just to see what it does? Uh, that's still there. It was there 10 years ago, and it's still there. And I hope in the future, these barriers will slowly disappear. One that disappeared, at least I've not seen in a long time, which a couple of years back was almost normal, is to test a free product. You had to give your credit card. And that was driving me mad insane. Yeah. Yeah. I've not seen that lately lately. So at least things are moving forward, but that feels that like this is for free, but give us your credit card information. Like what? Yeah. Like credit card should not be your identifier. And not everyone has one yet. Very true, true. So yeah, you're true. cutting off a lot of students. That's not a right, you know, that's not the barrier to entry you want either. Yeah. So I think the industry has moved forward from the the idea that a credit card is your ID, yeah. There are countries, big countries, that it's not easy to get access to a credit card or you cannot. So that's, you literally remove them for the potential users of your product. Right. So that would be kind of a vile experience if the onboarding would be more seamless, no demanding data and, and inclusive. Thank you very much uh, for uh, this interview and also for your um, participation as jurors. Um, well, we know, uh, but it's probably from the outside not apparent how many hours and hours and weekend hours and evening hours went into this and how, many, how deeply you had to inspect some portals, uh, especially where the chase was really close because they are all awesome. And then it's hard to choose who's the winner this year. I want to take a moment to recognize how much work you all put into this year over year. I've been a juror over the years and seen how much work you've put into the assessment sheets, how much smoother the process has gotten year over year. You all are doing a great service to the entire dev portal industry. So I want to take a moment to recognize that as well. This helps all of us so much. And to see 
how much yes. you all grow this over the years is just wonderful. So thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. And your whole team. Thank you. Yeah. I, I feel you. very honored that we can enable this. I, I think we're enablers. Um, this would not be possible without the work of the jurors. Yeah, thank you very much, you your team. You make the process as well feel very, uh, it seems less, but it seems less, but as well, you feel like, you feel about being of a group, belonging to a group and participating in something that is giving back as well to the community. So offering us a chance to give back after so many years, uh, that I appreciate a lot. But as well, I really enjoy the sessions, the way the communications handle all the processes and so on. Yeah. Uh, it's a refreshing, energizing working on that. Mm -hmm. And also, thank you for your passion with us. You know, we have to coordinate three different calendars, uh, three two different time zones. Uh, it is not easy yeah. at all. So yeah, thank you for that. So thank you for everyone. Um, this was the part where we asked the jurors uh, three, and um, at the next gala event on the fifteenth of December, um, I will be asking. Um, along the same lines um, are other jurors. So we'll see what they say about um, <clears throat> the state. So today um, we are going to announce the uh, finalists and award winners in seven nomination categories, best visual design, best international and localized uh, developer portal, best accessible developer portal, new developer experience innovation, community outreach and support, uh, the best dev portal beyond REST platforms, and uh, the best use of analytics in a dev portal. Uh, we hope to have a representative from each uh, award-winning team on the virtual stage. Uh, let's see how this goes. Uh, it's a little harder with this global virtual setup, so there might be some surprises, but we'll shall see. And uh, this is where I pull in <laughs> <laughs> my cohort in hiding. Uh, so uh, welcome, Christophe and Thomas. Uh, he's going to help me announce the winners. Uh, I'll be the voice for the jury, so they can remain anonymous. <laughs> so, <laughs> first category: uh, best visual design. Um, this is one of the most popular ones among the nominees. Um, why is visual design even a category for a documentation portal award? Well, I hope that you have an idea after uh, what uh, Anne Anthony and Alvaro had to say. But to reinforce that, clarity does improve the developer experience and your developer portal will inspire trust when you present every aspect of the APIs in a well-structured and understandable way. The award for the best visual design showcases developer portals that have found the perfect harmony of usability, content and aesthetics and present every aspect of the APIs in a well-structured, understandable ways. These portals inspire trust through superior production quality. Most importantly, they show the clarity of purpose and the cohesion in execution. From among 19 nominees, the jury chose three finalists and one other portal got a special call out to. Uh, the jury wanted to call out the astonishing API use case implementation from the Chase developer portal. The three panel API demo page gave wow moments to all the jury members. The combination of the visual demo with the documentation and the code is fantastic and a great way to learn step by step. These pages are well uh, are very well designed, easy to navigate, and immediately understandable. Wow, indeed, and well done. TomTom Tom has built a great developer portal. The visual design is very pleasant to look at, and the clean design matches perfectly with the company brand. The design includes nice visual elements like maps and animations that help developers to better understand both their product offerings and APIs and SDKs. We love that the design matches so well uh, with the company's brand. We loved that even the bullet points were customized as waypoints to stick with a mapping team and match the brand. Please allow us to recognize the hard work and uh, know that we notice your teams are doing a fantastic job in improving the portal year after year. Seeing the Empathy Platform Docs portal, uh, the jury really liked the product and its visual identity. The architecture of the portal is original, the onboarding journey is simple and great, and the overall visual design is delightful. They found that the right balance between content and visual support through images and animations, animated visuals are simply awesome and fit perfectly within the portal content. 
The document index along with the progress bar right side are handy and very well designed. We appreciate the level of detail from the 404 page to the cookie freeness of the portal. This is a cookie free area. Uh, who needs cookies when you can have trust? Feel free to browse our site uh, and the only cookies you need to worry about are the edible kind. These docs are true to their product name, showing empathy in many ways, shapes and forms. The Mercedes-Benz developer portal uh, has such excellent and sleek visual design. How is this even possible for a documentation site? The pages are clear and easy to navigate. UI makes the portal intuitive. The team has put a real effort into building a design that supports the journey and the design is consistent on all pages of the portal. The technical docs are clean and easy to understand. Swagger UI has been successfully integrated within the portal and may be a best practice example for that integration. We love the way the different tiers are presented, offering to even test the SDK with your own car. The design really helped to understand the various ways of testing the product and made the experience enjoyable. Be right back. I'm heading to the Mercedes dealership to buy a car so I can use the SDK, was what one of the jurors <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> um, so, but what portal is awarded the best visual design uh, category award this year? And the winner is... Empathy Platform Docs. Um, congratulations to the team behind this portal. Um, uh, is there a representative of the Empathy Platform Docs uh, here to join us on the stage? Um, well, we're looking for somebody. Um, uh, to our question why nominated in this category, the team wrote, Empathy Platform Docs is designed to provide a guided path through empathy.co uh, documentation for both technical and non-technical users in the most enjoyable way possible. Throughout the documentation portal, users will find clean and consistent styles, pleasing interactions, and a clear hierarchy of UI elements uh, and contents. Uh, all these are thanks to the design team that continuously and meticulously crafts and maintains every little detail. One more. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> from one note from Major, the site is especially thoughtful and helpful towards the low-code retailer audience and the ethics first user. The UI elements and layout is greatly helpful to the user to focus on what to do next. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was Hello. helpful. <laughs> Hello. Uh, um, to be honest, I am get out of words. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's uh, it's an honor to receive this this award because it's a recognition to of all of the effort behind it. Uh, and I would like to especially mention the the entire Empathy Docs team who made this documentation portal possible. Uh, they are simply the best. Uh, um, of course, thanks to all the designers who have participated creating the visual design and the user experience and uh, everything. So um, thanks to the jury. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so, well, thank you for participating uh, and for, for making an awesome portal. Um, uh, there's a question that we mm -hmm. had that we wanted to ask your team. Well, you as representative for the team. Uh, can you maybe tell us a little bit more about the history behind the design? Um, uh, when was the portal launched? And uh, what is the, what, which version are you at right now? Is this your, this is not your first version, I imagine. Um, well, we, we launched the uh, portal then on the, the last, uh, the summer on the 2021. Okay. Uh, okay, the first uh, version. Uh, we did before an MVP, and then we we decided to go live uh, summer uh, last year. Um, now, well, to be honest, we are a, a we are a fairly new team in the mm -hmm. company, so yeah, we have um, we have started uh, this documentation portal from scratch together, mm -hmm. uh, um, and now uh, well, we are trying to improve every day, uh, uh, every quarter to to help. Uh, the company, uh, um, everybody, clients to understand the, our product through our documentation, our documentation portal. Uh, yeah. is, is it uh, like, do, uh, do you, are you doing a lot of user research 
Um, and, and like, do you gather a lot of feedback for your design or um, that this is such an inspiring um, topic that it all just flows from the team? Yeah, to be honest, at the beginning, uh, we, we have a, a very robust team designers. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, so we we take uh, advantage of this and uh, um, they did a very, very good uh, job with all the design, the user experience, the the, the thing that you can see there, uh, like the choose, choose, choose your adventure, you know, depending of your user profile. Um, uh, yeah, and then uh, we are starting, but we want to improve more and we are starting the, this kind of uh, user research. We want to uh, uh, help more to our sales team or growth. Uh, we are starting this uh, user research with uh, clients um, um, or internal uh, uh, employees, you know. So uh, we, mm -hmm. we are kind of into the this user research. We're starting with that. Okay. Mm. But all without cookies. Great start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a key point in all the yeah. for for our product. Don't mm. don't take the uh, respect the privacy of the users um, mm -hmm. and, and don't use cookies for never. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. And congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. And we roll the cookie further from visual design to accessible developer portals. What is an accessible developer portal? Uh, developer portals that follow specific guidelines and practices in order to cater to all users with consideration for disability types and severity of impairment. This category highlights the standards and efforts that result in digital products accessible by the widest range of people. The jury shares the following message. It has been a pleasure to evaluate all the candidates. We have learned a lot about how different companies from different industries implement accessibility in their portals. Let's hope to see even more nominees next year. We really believe that accessibility is an important factor in making a developer portal truly inclusive. There should be no excuses to make an accessible portal since there are many tests and tools that provide metrics that can serve as a guide to know the accessibility status of our portal. From here, we invite all future candidates of any category to invest time and resources to make their portals a more pleasant size for everyone. It is worth it. And we have a special call out from the jury. <clears throat> the jurors would like to call out the great work done by the Chase developer uh, team especially regarding the accessible UX of the portal. Uh, keep up the good work. It is a delight to visit the Chase developer portal. Um, and the best accessible dev portal category award in 2022 goes to Platform OS. Um, so the Platform OS developer portal <clears throat> has won um, this year's award uh, from the journey. Uh, we have been pleasantly surprised to see that the Platform OS developer portal team has taken so much care in the accessibility of their portal, from their wonderful style guides to the meticulous care of the contrast level in the images. They are the winners of this category. Congratulations. So congratulations. Thank you very much uh, to you, the organizers, uh, the judges, our team members and our community. Uh, this recognition means a lot to us uh, because we deeply care about accessibility and we have been continuously educating ourselves and improving the accessibility and uh, inclusiveness of our dev portal. And we will keep advocating for accessibility in all platforms that uh, are available to us. So we hope to have some more conversations with all of you about uh, different aspects of this topic in the future. I'm not sure if you can hear me now. We do. <laughs> I, I just wanted to give a shout out to Diana and the team and our community as well, who've provided so many different uh, touch points culturally and globally for us to also start thinking about uh, multilingual support across our documentation, uh, identification of where your region might be based on IP address, and then making suggestions on what might be culturally sensitive to people in different parts of the world, uh, as well as language. So that's been through involvement with the uh, Dev Portal Awards. Thank you, jurors, 
thank you to the Dev Portal team and uh, Diana. Can't, couldn't have done it without you. You were a rock star. Thank you, and thank you to all those who got involved. You push us to be better every year. There was a question we had in mind for you. Um, so um, to help the community, I'm going to read it off. I'm going to cheat. Um, <laughs> to to help the community write with accessibility in mind, uh, the Platform OS documentation style guide also provides some simple guidelines for structuring content and for accessible language. Um, but this is for your community. Uh, so how, how easy is it to get people to actually adhere to that? Do you see, do you have any data on that already or, or how is that working out? Well, it's working out better than we expected. Mm -hmm. So um, of course we have more rounds of reviews for uh, all changes, but um, with time, you can see that uh, uh, there is less and less uh, edits needed to achieve uh, the the result that we want. So uh, I think uh, it helps, and and it's good to give this into the hands of users and uh, trust them to follow follow these guidelines. So that that could be a potentially strategy that other uh, other teams might want to to steal or copy or <laughs> borrow we, we've uh, actually open sourced all of our documentation and we take a doxus code approach and we'd be very um, we'd be honored to let others just wholesale mm -hmm. copy our documentation we we ha would be honored if you copied mm -hmm. okay cool um so thank you very much um congratulations so, congratulations thank you the award for the best international and localized dev portal recognizes developer portals that drive engagement with a driver's diverse audience through their content strategy or user experience. For example, being able to recognize users' language, location, local legal requirements, and regional expectations. <clears throat> the jury reported on this category the following. <clears throat> Our technical world still expects a good grasp of the English language to collaborate with others. So even if your technical skills are excellent, you may feel at a disadvantage if you cannot engage with a developer portal in your country's language. We were happy to see the entrance in this category and encourage portal owners and portal fans to consider submitting their favorites in this category. That said, it was difficult to choose a winner. So let's see who is the winner in this category. So the winner, BNI Digital Services, had localized videos, chatbots, and tutorials. And we all felt that there was a good coverage for the developers in the region served the most by the portal. A close second was the OLX uh, Group Developer Hub, where the design was quite visually appealing and effective in directing developers based on their needs. We also noted that the smart implementation of the Google Translator API, uh, and we saw some nice examples in the collection of submissions. The BNI Digital Services Portal did a nice job with the selection of which pages to translate, focusing on certain pages, such as the frequently asked questions, perhaps for support reasons, which indicated deep knowledge or empathy for the audience. The jury enjoyed learning about the regional government's digital uh, initiatives, as well as various integrations going on around the world. It's exciting to see that developers are playing an active role in both integrations and transformations. These develop, uh, dev portals are certain to lead the way to clear communication and education around the globe. And I'd like to invite BNI Digital Services to the stage. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Congratulations. Hello, Laura. Hello, Crystal. You can hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Congratulations. Yes. Um, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, and well, I don't know. No, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. oh, I was going to say, I'm really happy that 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 um, uh, like because you've you've been participating a lot and you've been winning the the public awards. So this is yeah, like, yeah. Um, you know one one of the jury awards that you're winning this year, which is really exciting. Uh, so yeah. well, I'm really happy about that. Um, we had a question for for you. Um, so I'm reading up again. Um, what are the factors that you need to consider and balance for your portal from the localization perspective? Is that something you want to try at answering, or do you have do you have something for that? If, yes, if you don't, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah Crystal. Uh, 
first of all, first of all, thank you for uh, your team guidance ya yeah, for us because uh, this portal is very very uh, uh, nice for us because this one is very good to our company and also our client. Uh, our localized is yeah uh, now our our client is very very happy with our design and also very very interactive so and, and it's it's this is really important for your business i think right because you're you're um like there's mm. um well I, th I think it's it's uh, depending on the context in which you're presenting your documentation and what kind of audiences you're you're trying to address. Um, uh, like most of the time, when I'm I've been talking with people uh, in 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 Europe, they're kind of like yeah, they'll deal with the English. Um, but I think uh, well, it's it's really it's great to see you taking the lead on this and uh, and helping us push the the industry forward because I think it's really important to serve people. Uh, in their own language, uh, at least for the content where it's 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 really important. Um, so congratulations for that. Yes, thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Actually, we are have uh, many brands in uh, overseas, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, not just in Indonesia. Now, uh, because because of uh, the service, so we can serve our customer outside Indonesia, not just in Indonesia. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I, well, I, I, I knew a bit of the background history, so that's why I, I knew how important this is for you. Yeah, thank, congratulations. Thank you, Crystal. Thank no, you. Okay. Yep. Next category, uh, the developer experience innovation category. It was at the same time the most exciting and the most challenging to review for the jurors. They had to ask themselves what innovation means and how to evaluate products, uh, portals, that offer very different uh, developer experiences fairly. Um, the jury wants to give a special call out to two nominees. Um, Fiserv Developer Studios, great work in offering an anonymous sandbox um, was uh, really exceptional. This allows developers to try their APIs without creating an account. It is a very powerful tool that drastically reduces the time to the first hello world and makes the discovery journey enjoyable. The jurors also wanted to give kudos to ABN AMRO for API live demos that allow discovering their APIs by playing with embedded demos on the developer portal. Um, I, I know a little bit about that, but um, more, more to come, I'll say. <laughs> um, but happy, happy that was, was called out. Um, the jurors felt that one portal did an astound, uh, outstanding job at offering an incredible and innovative experience. And they decided to award the 2022 developer uh, awards at uh, the portal awards for the best new developer experience innovation to platform OS. The platform OS developer portal, uh, after creating an account, their guided onboarding process allows developers to set up a demo site in a single click without having to validate your email address. This removes most of the onboarding friction and allows developers to discover and test their product in a few minutes. Congratulations to the Platform OS team for winning the best DX Innovation Awards. Um, so welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> so you won uh, the award for uh, best onboarding experience uh, last year, and it seems that it's so good that the jury <laughs> found it to also be a, a developer experience innovation. Congratulations. Congratulations. So Thank you. there was a. There was a question uh, that we've prepared for you. Um, it's clear how much attention goes into all aspects that impact the developer experience on the dev portal. How do you collect and analyze feedback for this? <laughs> yeah. The most uh, important channel of feedback is, of course, from our users. To make this more structured, uh, we have regular user research rounds. We use different user research methodolog methodologies and uh, uh, different approaches with different target audience segments. So uh, we make sure that uh, all of this information gets to us and is um, in, a, in a way that we can use it. Uh, and of course, we also share uh, the results of our user research with our users and community and everyone. So um, 
it's also, I think, a nice way to to give back to the community and, and show how we do this. And uh, apart from that, we have lots of conversations with our users. We have uh, many, many different channels for uh, our community to communicate with us. So I think that uh, this really helps uh, the information to get to us. Yeah, so, our developer ecosystem is very vocal. Um, when they like or don't like something, they let us know. And it's it's very welcome feedback. And you also have like you have quite a big UX team, uh, I think, right? Like, so yeah, we, how we, many are you now? Yeah. Well, actually, it does come across that way. Uh, we are a small team overall, and uh, for a team of thirty in total, mm -hmm. we are and we are hosting thousands and thousands of applications. Uh, we do incredible uh, work. We're also our UX team and our design team are open sourcing. Figma templates, design systems, everything, not just for our documentation, but for also everything and all the applications built on our platform. So although we are small, we get a lot done. Um, kudos to the team. They're, they really are world class and we are, uh, we're blessed to have the team we have. So, and how, um, just, just for like understanding, like how many people in your team are working on your developer portal then? So the developer portal itself, uh, in the, doc the documentation or the actual, the special secret source underneath? Uh, well, it's, uh, well, this is one of the things I see a lot with, with teams that, um, like, it takes a lot of effort to, to have all the skill sets that are going to make, like, something like what you're pulling off. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you know, there's a lot of people that, that's, like, from your small team, I think a big part of it is involved in this aspect because I think it's really important for your business, right? It's absolutely key and critical. Yeah. I would say that our documentation being a developer portal, the documentation is your marketing site as well. Mm -hmm. Because if a developer comes to your marketing site, your landing page, and then they flick over to the documentation and it's not in line with their expectations, where well, you've just lost somebody. So we put absolute priority number one into our documentation and, and uh, there's not just our team, but it is the developer community and ecosystem that is a feedback loop into that. So although our core team might be only six people, mm -hmm. uh, that's developers, that's Diana, that's UX and UI, we have hundreds of developers that are actively feeding back into that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much. The developer portals uh, that feature... Uh beyond the REST platforms. Um, they can unify interfaces from across a range of technologies to create a systematic business developer experience. The interfaces could be non-REST APIs, event catalogs, widgets, or even QR codes. The developer portal might provide interfaces for data collections, AI or IoT services, or other types of developer platforms. How coherent is the offering? Does the portal help developers to create a mental model or system map of the interface landscape? How does the portal help developers to find an easier, lower maintenance way to implement an experience, for example, through an SDK or widget you maintain and support, even if they came looking for an API? In this category, the jury was looking for developer portals that combine cataloging and documentation of individual assets with sense-making and so storytelling to help developers discover the right affordance for their project. How does the portal approach solving a unique presentation problem? Although for non-REST API implementations, the portal still needs to serve sort of the same types of information, it is less standardized, so to say, and a little harder to do. The jury was looking for representation approaches that are novel and serving the purpose well. And this, in this category, we're not going to announce uh, runner-ups. Uh, however, we have two winners. It's a tie. So how does that work for the stage? <laughs> 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 so the jury selected two nominees as award winners, the Ivan Developer Portal and the Platform S Developer Portal. These two portals uh, match the jurors' expectations of delivering a great Beyond REST Platforms Developer Portal in a complementary fashion. Surveying the Ivan developer uh, portal, it had no page. Um, it had no page encountered that made the visitor feel less understanding than before. 
The jury especially liked content design, how the portal talks about things and explain it in one sentence on the current page with lots of illustrations. The generous use of typography and design elements, the content design makes all the information work well together. The jury appreciated um, the Platform OS portal offering for developer flexibility, the open explanation of the offered third-party API integrations. Congratulations to both winners. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, Ivan. So um, I've got questions mostly for Avon, I think, oh. <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so Avon is a multi-cloud platform for open source managed data solutions. Uh, they're building a developer-centric one-stop collection of resources. Their mission is to make developers' lives better. Uh, um, uh, I think this is probably crap from your marketing site. Uh, we do that on the Avon Developer Portal by... Oh, no, no, this is from your submission, I think. We do that on the Avon Developer Portal by signposting the different products, integrations, and tools, and creating a consistent data structure so that users always feel at home. It's a young project constantly improving and expanding. So um, if, you if you're if you ready to share that information, what are you planning for your next iterations? That's a question I got for you. <laughs> I don't know if you if you if you have like because it's it's really um, this going beyond. Uh, I've been talking a lot about this with customers about going beyond REST APIs, like to not too many developer portals are focused on APIs and, and they're focused on, on the technology. And it's basically, um, it's an interface for one aspect of a company's technological infrastructure. And I think that's wrong. I think that um, developer portals should be uh, interface portals uh, that's, that go beyond that. And it sounds like that's more or less also what you're trying to do. Is that, is that the vision you have? Uh, I do believe that, yeah, so building a developer portal uh, which can serve the uh, users is very, very difficult. Uh, what we try to achieve, we focus on what our users need. So uh, we try to keep the goals of the readers in mind when we provide the information so if we really carefully shape every article so the person who comes there can grab the information and very fast continue doing what they were doing before that so they really we don't really aim for them to spend ages on the dev portal they should build stuff with the knowledge that they get so that's what we keep as an uh, priority um, and we also value collaboration, so that's another strong part of uh, our uh, team. Of, of uh, a lot of actually teams are involved at building uh, Ivan Developer Portal. Um, so I'm not sure if this answers your question. <laughs> well, it's, um, well, it's a question I keep running with. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep asking it to everybody I'm, I'm talking with, <laughs> just to see, like, because I, I think that's where. Well, anyway enough for, for me you're the winner um so oh, congratulations I, yeah. I also wanted to say thank you so much it's such an honor to be here and such a pleasure to receive this award um thank you also for bringing the awareness uh, to the work on the developer portal i think it kind of usually keeps behind the scenes and no one talks about it but it's such a lot of efforts uh, and uh, this means a lot to us. And uh, as I said, Ivan Developer Portal is a collaborative effort. So on behalf of all people who are involved in building it, and we are open source, so everyone can check the contributors. Uh, so uh, yeah, thank you so much. I have something to give away. Um, <clears throat> one of the jurors, uh, and this will come up in an interview at the next gala event, but I want to say it now. Uh, one of our jurors, uh, Bob Watson, and I named him because uh, if you know who Bob Watson is, then you're going to understand what this means. He said that when he looked at the, the actual documentation on the Ivor developer portal, he had to sit down because it's so good. It's so well done. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> My heart melts. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I still had a question. So there still is a question for Platform OS also. Uh, it was a, a question about uh, GraphQL, um, because that's, I think, the, the, uh, the key beyond REST that you are documenting. Um, uh, let's see. Because I wrote this. You wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to ask the question? Well, I wanted to ask both, uh, both uh, the same question, really, what are your next iteration plans? But of course, you've been on the stage already and you kind of gave away uh, what you plan. Um, what I know from your submission is that uh, the domain-specific language, GraphQL, um, you have built, uh, baked it into the core, and you have available both the open source documentation that you synchronize with and also additional support and examples mm -hmm. to help the developers get up to speed. <clears throat> um, how, how do you see this helping out? Do you need to give a lot of support or it works? It, it seems to work because what we're seeing being built on the platform from net new developers uh, is just amazing. It, it blows our mind to see what type of applications our channel partners and developers are building. And the support is very, very minimal because the documentation has been so good. And uh, so I think that is the evidence of you know, the, the, the credibility of the documentation and, and GraphQL being a domain specific language, Liquid Markup also open source from Shopify is also baked in. So we're augmenting their open source documentation and then adding again uh, additional functionality for developers along with the documentation for that. So kudos to Diana and the team. They just make it easy for developers to jump in and do things without needing too much support. Cool. Congratulations to Ivan and Platform OS. And um, well, those of you who are representing nominees, you that you can only nominate in three categories in every year. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> the next category that I'm going to announce uh, is going to be a surprise. What does the community outreach and support category ask from the nominees? And you see the nominees listed also. <clears throat> How are you in touch with your developer community? Are you creative and inclusive environment for your users? Can they come in and find or contribute to improving the documentation experience for all? Are you supporting the needs of segmented or regional communities? How do you interact with your API consumer audience? how API consumers shape your uh, product roadmaps. So very generally put, how do you support, motivate, engage, and grow your community? And the jury would first like to um, name uh, a runner up and applaud them for their work. <clears throat> the jury felt that the Visa Developer Center was a very strong entry in this category. The site was well designed with a landing page that serves a range of customer engagement. The jury appreciates their active social media presence, the numerous guest blogs and tutorials, and an attempt to incentivize developers who would provide the most contributions. But the award for the best community outreach and support category this year is giving to Ring Central. Ring Central developers. <clears throat> The jury found that the Ring Central developer uh, portal uh, addressed their community the best of the entrants in this category. The Ring Central developers site made it easy to access the community features, and those features provided a positive user experience. The portal shows active and up to date social media accounts that support their community engagement as well. The jury especially liked how they tracked community engagement and recognized and rewarded participation. From one of the jurors, Ring Central developers seems to have robust community support. I think features like their Game Changer program could be more visible. Some background information. Um, last year, um, this award was also uh, open, this category, and Ring Central was a runner up. Uh, and this year, they won. So, extra congratulations for that. Congratulations to anyway, Ring Central developers. Yep. And um, if you haven't seen their Game Changer program, go check it out. It's uh, very well executed. It's uh, yeah, a surprise when you see it the first time. Right. I have one last uh, category um, to announce. Actually, um, do you want to? Uh, me? Um, maybe I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> so in the use of analytics in the Dev Portal category, one portal, uh, NetBest Bank of APIs was nominated. The jury really loved the performance and metrics displayed on a portal. The level of transparency, even the error rates, is something that we are not used to seeing on other developer portals. 
it's interesting that the NetWest Bank of API's uh, banking partners are willing to show their quarterly metrics to the dev for developers coming to the portal. The additional information sections are well written and informative, showing a willingness to explain the time spans, whether the data journey included loggings or not, and which services or microservices were under observation. The uh, attention to detail is to be appreciated. Plus, the time spans are identical across Bank API data collection, allowing for comparison, even if a lot of caveats may apply. While congratulating to the nominee for all they achieved in showing their metrics, the jury decided not to give out the award in this category this year. And the reason for that is, in this category, we would have liked to see metrics and statistics specific to an API integrated developer account and its applications to better understand how it performs when consuming the APIs. The number of API calls or most used APIs among others. This data could be extremely useful to determine how my application is used and if we should modify or iterate the existing implementation or launch a marketing campaign. Perhaps an aggregate approach or enabling CSV data access could enable this type of use case. Depending on the specifics of a portal, these metrics could, for example, be integrated within the account page of the portal. So this was the categories uh, that we have announced um, this year. And I would like to congratulate uh, and thank all of the nominees. So. Um, we celebrate all of the nominees for the thoughtfulness, hard work, and creativity, and everything else that goes into creating good developer portals. Thank you for entering this awards competition. We were honored. I asked all jurors about their impressions and feedback off the record, too, and it is a resounding and recurring opinion that seeing the nominated portals from up close, surveying them, is an intriguing and rewarding experience for them because they are so well done. There are 18 award categories open this year, um, and we are going to announce the finalists and the award winners for the other nine categories two weeks and a day from now, on the 15th of December. It is also the moment you can hear the priceless insights of jurors Alex Akimov, Meenakshi Katri, Michael Mang, Matthew Ravel, Sophie Rutar, Anthony Sansone, Leah Tucker, and Bob Watson. They will share their insights on some trends and highlights of API documentation in 2022. Can you explain us, Christoph, why is this two days <laughs> and two weeks in a day? Why is it the 15th? Um, so we've been trying, well, I think we've been, we had actually the fortune when, uh, when we were um, announcing or when, when we had already figured out what were going to be the dates for the Dev World Awards, we figured out that the API Days conference was going to be at the same time. So and, uh, I'll be in Paris, so I won't be here together with Laura uh, to <laughs> do the <laughs> announcements. Um, but uh, at the same day, there will also be uh, a conference track at the API Days that our team is helping organizing. Um, if you happen to be in Paris, well, and or you, um, are already participating, or if you maybe you want to start participating uh, in the event, there'll be a track specifically about feedback metrics and analytics. Um, uh, it's something that is really important. It's something that's hard to serve. Um, and uh, we've brought several different people together to come and do a talk about that. Uh, I will also do a, a rerun of my um, Anatomy of a Great Developer Portal uh, talk. Uh, it's going to be evolved, but yeah. That's, that's for them. Um, so, um, yeah, if, if you happen to be in Paris or if you live there or if you happen to pass by or if you're there for the API days, love to meet you there. So about these talks, the interesting part, at least for me, is that uh, while um, inviting speakers, I asked every single one of them uh, that they would please skip all the Wikipedia basics, uh, anything that people can just Google, leave it out and start from their very specific context. Because at the end of the day, we would like to show that it's actually incredibly hard to navigate and to figure out what to measure. And once you have all the data, what do you want to know from it? It's not tea leaf reading, but sometimes it might feel like. And there's conflicting, inter conflicting interests on what somebody wants to measure or they see a point in measuring. So and I'll, I'll be presenting the track together with Lucas Rosenstock, who, who's going to be my co-host uh, for part of the program. 
And in the meantime, if I might have the next slide, please. Uh, if you want to uh, read or hear more about uh, developer portals, uh, we have put some uh, sources for you. Uh, de developer portals newsletter and uh, the matching uh, blog on uh, Pronovix uh, brings you uh, our own articles uh, and we pull your attention to things that we find very interesting as relevant to um, developer portals and API documentation. Um, I think one of the last ones that went out was about um, metrics and, you know, Ala Maslow, uh, what do you write first, second, third, and, and what do you measure at which stage? Um, and we are also running two podcasts. Uh, these are sister events of the Dev Portal Awards, if you like it like that. Um, the API The Docs podcast uh, asks uh, people who are actually, uh, yeah, elbow deep in the documentation, um, how, why, what, who, and the API Resilience podcast is more uh, leaning towards the strategy of APIs and uh, the future of API programs and API strategy. So in the, the, if you go and check it out, we have uh, last episodes has been about uh, com exploring complexity as something that helps us to better understand what we are doing with APIs and like and how we could do APIs better um, through an understanding of how complexity and strategy and social technical systems interact with each other. Uh, I'm also, when I have time, I'm also working on some new blog posts that that'll also be on our newsletter about uh, platforms. Um, so, well, if you're interested in any of this, go and have a look. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, this was the first gala event of the 2022 Dev Portal Awards. We again congratulate uh, and welcome uh, and celebrate everybody who uh, participated every single member of every team, however much they have put in, uh, the jurors and the team uh, from uh, Pronovix who have put a lot of work uh, as supporting and organizing this uh, award. I'm looking forward to meeting you again uh, at the second gala event on the 15th of December, which is going to be uh, two weeks from now on a Thursday. It's also going to be a virtual event, uh, but please know that you have to register separately so that you will get the reminders and the link and all that. Um, thank you, everyone, and see you soon. I'd like, to do, I'd like to do a special thank you to Laura because I know how much she's been working on all of this. <laughs> but I enjoyed this. It's very exciting. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you.